video tutorials by Andrew Buckle. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you the glass filter. Now, it can be found in the filter gallery, and I'm just going to quickly go over here. Now, I've got this gradient here I created earlier, and it's basically just a nice backdrop. You can use type, you can use images, a whole range of things. Maybe use it for creating like frame designs. And I'm just going to go use this very basic gradient here. Now, filter and filter gallery. And you see, look into the distort section. That's the distort there, and glass. You see, you can also get there via this little drop down that's got glass there. So just select that. Now, you've got a couple of settings. You've got distortion. If you put that down to zero, can't see anything at all. There's no effect there at all. You can also see put the distortion up fairly high, and you can then see the actual diamond design. Now these are this design here. I'm actually just going to go back to the blocks. Now this one's one of the default ones. Now one thing with Photoshop, there's only four settings here, blocks, canvas, etc. But you can actually create obviously create your own or use obviously displacement files, displacement maps, PSD files, and you can use those. So this is just quite a little starter texture. So you've got that distortion if you put it back down like very low, you can hardly see it. Put that up there, you can see it a lot greater. Now normally when I do my glass distortion effect, I normally put it fairly maximum, but you don't have to, of course you can set it halfway. Also you can modify the smoothness. So you can just tweak those to get a slightly different effect. Now, also I say texture, that's the thing. It's a PSD file, now you can create your own PSD files, they're just basic grayscale designs, that you can the seamless designs. But so of course you can use non-seamless designs, you don't have to use a seamless design and just load them via load texture. Now the one that was an example was one of these, I can't remember which one I selected earlier, but so I'm just going to select one of those. So done 16. You can see it in the drop down there, you can just see it. Unfortunately what it would be nice would be if it actually remembered also the uh, list of all the ones you actually selected. So, so you can actually just go and quickly select eight or seven or whatever it was to use. So 16 there. So you can also now, once you've actually got that going smooth, you can actually see a very, very, very sharp line there. I quite like that effect. It's quite a nice little effect. You move that around, obviously, just to see how it's applied to the rest of the design. And you can modify the scaling. Now, the scaling, sadly, only goes down to 50%. I'm not certain why. It seems odd. You can't put it any lower. I would have said 10 or something. Maybe make the scaling a 1,000. I don't know why it's set only between 50 and 200, but that's it. That's what the filter is designed, and that's what it works with. Okay, and you can also invert, so you can see it changes the direction. You can actually see that better when you've got a scaling down a bit like that, and you actually just invert it, just changes direction up that way or that way. Okay, so once you've actually got this effect, what you can do, of course, you can apply it, and I'm just gonna apply it straight away there. You can see the effect, it's quite nice. Now, Photoshop is pretty good, but I mean, I have to say that the filters, say, like in uh, surface texture, etc., in Painter, probably has a much nicer thing, but it's still pretty good. It's pretty good. But it would be nice, obviously, if there was a, an update at some point for this, this filter to actually add far more options. Now, I really don't like going and saying that in a, a video tutorial. It's a great feature still. Now, what you can do then is I'm going to go back, but I'm going to go with fade. So you could actually say here, edit and fade filter gallery. And what you can do, you can just say like darken. So you can just get a nice little multiply. So that's applied nicely, overlay. Now difference is always quite a nice one. I think difference actually creates a sort of nice glowing edge sort of effect. So what you can do, just say difference. Well, of course you can modify the opacity as well, but I think difference there. And then of course you can what you can do just go over here vibrance to actually bring those that thing. so you can actually see you can actually use the glass filters to create some interesting sort of like emboss like negative weird effects like that and you can apply the filters as well oil paint works well with that as well to create a nice sort of smeary sort of design anyway it's going to go back but that's what i was just pointing out the edit and fade that's always a really really useful way of just fading it and creating sort of an interesting effect 
from the back. I'm just going to go back again, filter gallery, because I want to show the next thing. And that's basically go to filter gallery again. And of course, it's got that effect there still, so I'm just going to change that. But what you can do is you can, of course, apply one of the other ones as well. But you can just go, go here to new effect layer. And obviously, it's the same as sort of applying the effect outside, but here, you can actually just quickly apply it and then you get the effect. So you actually add two or three. And I think it actually creates a much better glass effect to the thing than just one application. So I, I think really it's a good idea to try it with multiple ones. So you can just sort of try that and you can see it creates a more interesting glass effect. I think there are more depth to it. Now, you can also, of course, modify the scaling. So you can combine that. So you can actually that's obviously all the other scalings are all still set to before, but now I've actually scaled one of these options. So you can go to the other one, it will show it back to that. But set it back there, you can see the scale in there. It doesn't modify the smoothness as well. But change that, add distortion, or the invert. You can really use this. Again, let's say I'm sometimes they'll see, ah, oh, it's not as good as certain things like Painter Paint. It's got some great things, lots of other applications, great things. Photoshop, you can really create some interesting glass designs just by doing this comment. Of course, you don't actually have to even keep the same texture there. You could go over here and low texture and add a different texture. I'm just using the same texture over and over again in this glass effect. So you've got that glass, and there you've got a really lovely sort of glass effect added for that. And of course, what you can do, you've got the effect within the filter gallery which you can see you've obviously got three glass distortions. But you can also, of course, just go down to stylize, oil paint, and then apply that. And I really think that that creates really a nice sort of painterly effect, that sort of nice sort of smeary sort of effect with, and of course you can apply other things like adjustments, etc., just to modify, maybe make it go black and white, and so on and so on. So as I got that, also, what of course you can do, and I'm just going to go back to Filter Gallery, and I've got that Filter Gallery, is that you can apply it as a layer. So I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to apply this one as a, to a layer, so duplicate layer. I'm just going to add a duplicate. And what you can do, you can go to Layer and Smart Objects and convert to Smart Object. So once you've actually done that, of course you can go to Filter Gallery, there's Filter Gallery again, and you can, you've got see. You can have three, you can have four. I don't know what the limit is actually. I've never tried the limit. I'm certain it probably says at some point, probably 10 or something, saying, no, you can't do that. Don't know. There might be uh, an upper limit. So you can actually modify those. And once you've actually got this, you can create. That's a nice thing as well. So you've got the original ones with a lot of depth. Then you apply a glass effect on top, but it's not so extreme. So you actually reduce the distortion down a bit. Click OK, and you can create lovely subtle glass effects on top of glass, on top of glass, and so on and so on, as well as obviously you see. But the key thing is the smart filter. So as a smart filter means you can actually just turn around and say, I don't want that, or I can just bring up the effect again, just bring that and then modify. Again, you've got those effects, it's all it's remembered a lot, and you can then change that again, maybe modify the scaling. And, of course, what you can do, you can add another effect on top of that. So again, stylize, oil paint, click OK. And of course, what you can do, you can turn around and say, filter gallery. Well, I can apply another one. Now, one thing that I would love to see, smart filters, would be a duplicate. Really nice to be able to select that. Just go there and duplicate. There's duplicate layer. There's no duplicate effect. Would be nice. And if you right click, all you can do is disable and edit, as well as modify the blending options, which is quite nice. But anyway, what you can then do, of course, you could add another on top of that. So just go to again filter gallery and you can apply it on top of that. And you can remove those, you can just disable them. You don't have to use those, and you've got the, the effect applied on top of that. So see, you can really create some very interesting designs. And also, because it's a layer, smart object, you can actually just go to different and just change the blending mode. 
back to create some sometimes interesting color effects as well. Now, what you can also do, and I'm just going to flatten this now. So you've got that design there, great sort of things. What you can do is also go to Window and Channels. You can blow that, say, this with Type as well. Probably works best personally with Type, actually flattened or on a layer with actually something in it. Without that, without sort of blur effect, etc., really doesn't seem to make a great effect. But maybe you might think differently. Now, what you can do, you can actually go, you can actually select the channels, red channels. So I'm just going to go to red and filter gallery. And again, you can set glass effect there, distort, and say maximum. Just put it there. Got the effect there. Go to green. You can go to filter gallery and glass. You can actually set the scale in there. Distortion. Click OK. And blue. You could, of course, obviously go and do that. But there's the actual final effect. You've actually modified it per channel. So the actual channel is different for those effects with the glass filter. So there's a whole range of different options you can use with the glass filter. And also another thing is that it can be used again with adjustments and many other effects as well. Not to be used just on its own. Anyway, I hope you found this of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel and also check out graphicextras.com because we're always adding lots and lots of tutorials on a whole range of different subjects, Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Illustrator, and many, many, many more. I hope you found this of interest. Thank you very much.